The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents No Man is a Stranger, starring Otto and Ottilie Kruger. Bob Hope is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Here is tonight's Family Theater host, Bob Hope. I speak seriously tonight about something very precious, something very important to all of us, our families and our homes. Family Theater is dedicated to our homes, to all families. It is dedicated with a simple conviction that a happy family is the most wonderful thing in the world, and what America needs greatly today is a strengthening of the bonds of home life. America needs family unity. I speak as just another father, another parent about the ideals of family theater. They're beautiful and believable, because I know that family prayer is not of date and old-fashioned. It's a vital and powerful force in home life today. It can mean the difference between a happy and an unhappy home because there's loyalty in a family where there's daily family prayer. Yes, there's loyalty and love, and they go all the way towards making a happy home. We will hear from Bob Hope again later in the program. Now, the Family Theater presents... No Man is a Stranger, starring Otto Kruger as Jared and Otterly Kruger as Carolyn. Dear Carl, greetings from America. I regret this delay in replying to your last letter. But if you have been following the accounts of the United Nations recently, you will understand how busy I have been. Believe me, old friend, being a delegate to this august assembly is no bed of roses, as they say here in America. Such interminable wrangling and discussion, so little basis for agreement on matters of the utmost importance to all the countries concerned. Well, I, I don't mind admitting I was fast losing faith, not only in myself, but in my fellow man as well. A most dangerous state of mind for one representing his government at such a crisis in world affairs. But uh, you will note that I use the past tense, which brings me to the purpose of this letter. I want to tell you of a series of events that happened to me recently. A series of events which I say in all sincerity has changed the course of my entire life. It was voted to declare a two-week recess from the UN affairs to permit certain of the delegates to return to their homelands for advisory conferences. There was no necessity for my doing this, however, so... Well, I decided to take a trip through the farmlands of New England. Because of my own boyhood on the farm, back in our country, I've always had great respect for the soil and the people who till it. And I felt perhaps it would help me to talk with these people and get again the feel of the land. So I borrowed an American friend's car. I went north from Lake Success never following any definite route, never staying longer than a day or two in one place. And it was while traveling along a lonely country road in Vermont that a series of events I mentioned begin to happen. Dusk was falling. I was beginning to wonder where I would spend the night when suddenly... I turned the sharp curve. I was blinded by the headlights of an approaching car. I swerved quickly to avoid the collision. And the next thing I knew, my wheels were embedded in a sandy ditch and I was unable to force my way out. I'm afraid that won't do any good. Huh? You're in up to 
the hubcaps. What? Oh, oh, you, you startled me. I'm afraid I did more than that. I tried to dim my lights, but it happened too fast. Oh, well, please don't feel badly. There's no harm done. Uh, now, if I can just call a garage to come tow me out. Huh? I doubt if our one garage is still open. Besides, there's no phone near here. Perhaps I could push you out with my car. Oh, no, you, <laughs> you probably succeed only in becoming stock yourself. <laughs> uh, can you tell me if there is an inn nearby? Well, there's a tourist house in the village, uh -huh. but it's always filled on weekends. Oh. And I'm quite sure you wouldn't be interested in what we laughingly call a hotel. Ah, well, that does present a problem, then. Uh, oh, by the way, perhaps we should introduce ourselves. My name is Jared Kobeck. How do you do, Mr. Kobeck? How do you do? I'm Carolyn Marshall. Uh -huh. you, you live near here, Miss Marshall? Yes, only about two miles from here. Say, why didn't I think of that before? Hmm? Well, you can spend the night at my place. Well, really, I, I... I live with my father. We have a farm down the road. You'd be very welcome to spend the night with us. Oh, that's very kind of you. <laughs> I hate to put you to the trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all. I feel responsible. Please say you'll accept. Well, I must admit you're very persuasive, but... Fine. Huh? You just get your bag and I'll... Well... Well, what are you staring at, Mr. Kobe? Huh? Oh, <laughs> forgive me. I, I was merely thinking what a fascinating country this is. I mean, one drives along a deserted road feeling lonely and tired, and when suddenly he's driven into a ditch by a lovely lady who asks him to spend the night with her family. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> well, perhaps, but don't be too hasty. <laughs> I have an uneasy feeling you may change your mind uh -huh. when you meet my father. Are you ready, Mr. Kobeck? You're very quiet, Mr. Kobach. Bashful? Hmm? Oh, <laughs> well, I, no, I've never been accused of that before. No, I was observing how ominous the hills appear in shadow. Are you a professor of some sort? Well, now, uh, why, why do you ask that, huh? Well, I don't know. You've just seen the type. Yeah? So quiet and serious. I'm a teacher myself. Ah. I have the first four grades in a rural school. And are they a problem? Oh, I can well imagine. You know, well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, though I am not a professor. I guess perhaps you would call me a student. Uh, a student of world affairs. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Kobeck, mm -hmm. in order to save you any embarrassment, I think I should tell you about my father. Well, is he such an ogre? Oh, he's one of the sweetest, most generous men I know. That's what makes his attitude so aggravating. His what? His attitude toward what, may I ask? Well, please don't take offense, but his attitude toward foreigners. Oh, you mean he resents them? Or, or rather us, uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. He has a general dislike for anyone with an accent. It all started about a year ago when the farm next to ours was up for sale. Mm -hmm. Well, Dad wanted a few uh, acres for pasture land, but the owner didn't want to divide his property before Dad could talk him into it, the farm had been sold. Ah, to a foreigner, eh? Yes. Mm -hmm. An Italian named Rumberti bought it. Mr. Rumberti has a son, Pietro. We became acquainted and began to see more and more of each other. Of course, Father objected, but finally we realized we were in love. I hoped this would make Dad relent, but it only made him more furious than ever. He was so infuriated that a stranger, and a foreigner at that, mm -hmm. should get the better of him. He's embittered against anyone with an accent. <laughs> no, no wonder you felt it necessary to warn me. And do you think it wise for you to invite me to stay at your home? Perhaps not. But I can't go on giving in to him forever. Oh, I know he never would have felt this way if it hadn't been for the farm. That petty disappointment has affected him out of all proportion. Well, I assure you, Miss Marshall, it is not an unusual circumstance. I have faced it many times in my work, only on a larger scale. Well, here's your chance for a little field work. This is the farm. Uh-huh. There's a light in the barn. Dad's probably milking the cows. Come, on, I'll introduce you. And please, Mr. Kobeck, don't judge him too hastily. Basically, he's the sweetest old guy in the world. Yeah, well, I promise to withhold judgment, but just let us hope he will do the same. Huh? Dad... May I interrupt for a moment? Yeah. I said, oh, 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 
Yeah. Who's that with you? Dad, I'd like you to meet Mr. Kobeck. Yeah, how do you do, Mr. Marshall? I'm very pleased to meet you. Mm, how do you do, Mr. Um, what can I say your name be? Kobeck. Jared Kobeck. Mm. Stranger in these parts? Uh, Mr. Kobeck's on a vacation, Dad. I forced him into a ditch a couple of miles down the road, and his car got stuck. So I... I invited him to spend the night with us. Spend the night? Oh, oh I, I was reluctant to accept, Mr. Marshall, but your daughter was quite insistent. I do hope it won't con inconvenience you. I shall leave first thing in the morning. Well, I reckon we can put you up for the night. Better give you a fair warning, though. Yes? About what? Well, if you're aiming to leave first thing in the morning, that'd be, let me see now, it'll be about 5.30. The day starts mighty early around here. <laughs> Well, as you can imagine, Carl, it was not a very restful night. Despite the billowy feather mattress on which I slept, the following morning when I went downstairs, Miss Marshall had prepared a delicious breakfast. Her father was seated there at the table. He greeted me coolly, as I had expected. And as the meal progressed, however, and I told him something of my own background on the farm and of my respect for farmers, his attitude relaxed and he became quite civil. I could see he was trying hard to like me, but at the same time trying just as hard not to show it. So after breakfast, he offered to take a team of horses and pull my car from the ditch. I tried to object, but he and his daughter were insistent, and so the three of us went to the scene. And upon pulling the car out, we found the rear axle had been broken. Well, Mr. Kopeck, don't look as if you're going very far with the broken axle. Right, we'd better go back and call Pete Hammond's garage and have him come to fetch you. Oh, Dad, you know how slow Pete is. I was thinking that maybe... No, perhaps we hadn't better. Well, what is it, Miss Marshall? What were you going to say? Well, Pietro, that's the boy I told you about, uh -huh. is a mechanic. And I was going to suggest we call him. Carol, that'll be about enough. Yes, I thought it would be. But I think it's an excellent idea. Why not call Pietro? Let's go back. What you do is your own affair. But if you call that Italian, I refuse to have anything more to do with the matter. Oh, Dad, why be so stubborn? What difference can it make? I don't need to talk the matter. What's it going to be, Mr. Kopeck? Uh, I think perhaps I will call Pietro, Mr. Marshall. Mm, very well. Uh, come along, Carolyn. Not yet, Dad. I'm going to stay with Mr. Kopeck. Oh, now, Miss Marshall, please. Oh, uh, thank you to stay out of this, Mr. Kopeck. I'm beginning to see how things stand. But while they're talking with you, I was willing to admit I'd been a little hasty in my thinking about foreigners. Now I can see that you're, well, that you're all alike. Bad influence. There's no place for you around here. Not for any of you. Dad, do you realize what you're saying? Yes, I realize, all right. I realize that everything that means anything to me is being uh, swiped from under my eyes by folks who've got no business here. You'd better make up your mind pretty quick, daughter, on which side of the fence you stand. Because it's got to be one or the other, and it's got to be much quick. So we got a lift to a farmhouse down the road and called Romberti's. Pietro came with a truck and he told my car to their farm. Pietro was a tall, dark-haired lad with lean muscles and a ready grin. His father, on the other hand, was short and wiry, with the softest eyes I have ever seen. Well, what do you think, Pietro? You, you fix up a Mr. Kobeck's car? Oh, sure, Bob. I can fix it. It might take a few days, though, Mr. Kobeck. I have to get some materials. Splendid, Pietro. I will, it will give me an excuse to remain here a little longer. <laughs> Mr. Kopeck, you, you, you like it here? Oh, indeed I do, Mr. Umberti. It reminds me very much of my homeland. Uh -huh. I shall see about getting a room in town until the car is ready. I wish I could invite you to stay with us, Mr. Kobeck. But I'm afraid under the circumstances it wouldn't be wise. Well, you're very kind to think of it. Thank you just the same. Uh, Mr. Kobeck, uh, we like very much if you stay with us. There's a plenty room. I'm sure, just popping myself. Why don't you do that? No, 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 that's very thoughtful of you. But really, no, it, it is not necessary. Uh, when one is long away from his homeland, it's good to be friends with someone who you got something in common. <laughs> How well I know this. We would like you to stay with us. <laughs> well, in that case, I would be most happy to accept. Perhaps I might even help to earn my keep by helping with the chores, eh? We'll have him help us haul water from the livestock, huh, Pop? <laughs> That'll keep him busy. Please, my son, that's another subject for joking. 
What did you mean, Pietro? Why do you have to hold water for the livestock? Isn't there a stream running through your pasture? Yes, but it's only a small one. We depend on it. Now, though, it's going dry, so Pop and I have to haul water from, well, away from the well, way up by the house. It's quite a problem. And it comes at a very bad time, too. Just as we are beginning to get a few wholesale markets for our milk. Well, perhaps we could figure some way to pump the water down there. Now, it's going to be expensive, and there's not too much money. Well, the trouble is, farmers like Mr. Marshall and the rest have pretty well cornered the wholesale market. Every obstacle on our way now just makes it that much harder. Well, excuse me, but I noticed a very large stream on your father's property, Miss Marshall. It runs close to the Rumberti farm. Now, couldn't some of that be diverted? Well, if Dad would be willing to do it. Uh -huh. He certainly can understand how vital it is. The stream on our property runs down from the north through several other farms before it reaches ours. And Dad knows how important it is to everyone. Mm, do you think it would do any good to ask him, honey? We could cut a channel through ourselves, it's so close. Well, there's nothing like trying. Will you and Pietro come with me, Mr. Rumberti, while I ask my father? Well, uh, I don't know, Carolina. Your father and I are neighbors, see, but he has not seen fit to accept me as his friend. Mr. Kopeck, uh, mm. what do you think? No, oh, please, please. I, I would prefer not to become involved. No doubt my answer would be yes. Yet it is a matter of diplomacy. And when it comes to that subject, I am just beginning to realize how very little I really know. <laughs> I suppose if the mission had not been so serious, we might have looked rather comical as we went nervously and in single file up to the Marshall house. Mr. Marshall, he was sitting in his big chair by the kitchen stove, and we entered and we stood waiting while Carolyn hesitantly explained the purpose of our visit. When she had finished, her father looked at each of us slowly and then addressed Mr. Rumberti. I reckon you're in a bad fix, all right, Rumberti. Too bad you didn't investigate the springs that feed your stream before you bought the property. But there was no reason to be in doubt, Mr. Marshall. Do you think you would have felt so? Mm, that's not the point. So happens I know that land as well as I know my very own. That's one reason I felt as it did when you sneaked it away from me. Hey, wait a minute. We didn't do any sneaking. We bought that land fair and square. Oh, please, Pietro, it's not important now. Well, it's a good thing he's Carolyn's father. I'd push that crack down his throat. All right, maybe I didn't mean it exactly like it sounded. But you know how I want some of that land for pasture. So, uh, here's what I'll do. I'll let you buy the land all you want. Then I'll run my stream right into your property. But we could not do that. We need that land for our own farming. Well, in that case, then there's no water. But, Dad, think what this means to the Robertas. What are they going to do? That's their affair. I've made my offer. Well, that's the best I can do. Okay. Come on, Pop. We're wasting our time. Uh, one moment, Pietro. There's something I wish you to say. Mr. Marshall. Yeah? Maybe you're forgetting that the water is truly not yours to give or to refuse. Uh, what do you mean? It's on my property, ain't it? Yes, it's on your property. My things like water and the air and the sunshine, they're given to us by the Almighty. He expects us to share them in his name. See here, I don't need anybody to tell me about God, and certainly no foreigner. Now get out, all of you. And you, Peter, or whatever your name is, stay away from my daughter. You understand? I'll let Carolyn decide that, Mr. Marshall. Come on, Dad. I don't like the air in here. Pietro. Mr. Rumberti, I'm sorry. I guess I knew all along that it wouldn't work. But it was worth a try. Yes, yes. Come, Pietro. Mr. Quebec, we, we go home now. And so I went to spend the remainder of my visit with the Rombertis. It was a simple life they lived, one of great sincerity and industriousness. Without realizing it, they were helping me far more than anyone had in years. Mr. Rombertis was a very religious man in a quiet, modest kind of way. And when I mentioned his difficulty with Marshall and how tragic it was that neighbors must be enemies, he would say to me, Mr. Kopeck, it's God's way. It is not for us to, to question him. Every night I pray, Pietro, my son, too, that our trouble with our neighbor may be settled. I, 
I do not think he's as bad as he appears. How could he be and have a daughter like Carolina? But he needs to be shown. Do we not all lose the way sometimes? We have to be shown. That is, that is all very well, my friend. But how can he be shown when he insists upon keeping you a stranger in your own community? Well, one must be patient. Mr. Quebec. Have you thought how busy God must be with everyone asking him for help? <laughs> Yet he finds time for each one of us, if we have just a little patience. The days passed quickly. I assumed regular duties around the farm. I took long walks through the woods with Pietro and Carolyn, listening to their youthful plans for the future. Well, at length my car was fixed, my vacation period was about over, and it was with great reluctance that I began to make preparations to depart. The evening before the day I was to leave, however, Carolyn came to the Romberti farm very much upset. It's our cattle. Yesterday they started acting very strangely and not giving milk. And today they're all sick, and one of the prize heifers isn't expected to live. Yes, but what caused it, Miss Marshall, do you know? Well, the vet said it's the water they've been drinking. Oh. We investigated and found it was polluted by waste matter thrown into the stream north of us. And you said the cows are not giving a milk? Well, only a little, and that's contaminated. Dad won't be able to meet his quotas, and he'll sure to lose his markets. That's no good. Pietro, come. We must go to him. Go to him? Papi, you're crazy. What can we do? Well, we have milk, more than enough than we need for our few markets. We will offer to share it with him. But he'll throw us out of the house. Well, we must take that chance. Mr. Kopeck, will you come with us? Uh, Mr. Romberti, I'm uh, inclined to agree with Pietro, but frankly, I wouldn't miss this for the world. So once again, we trooped single file up to the Marshall's kitchen door, and once again, Miss Marshall precedes us into the kitchen where her father was seated in the big chair by the stove. He was staring vacantly into space. His eyes looked like those of a whipped dog. Dad, I've, I've brought some visitors. Uh, how's that? Oh, oh, it's you, well, I've been expecting you. E expecting me, Mr. Marshall? Now, why? I knew this would be too good an opportunity for you to miss. Will? Well, go ahead, go ahead. I've got it coming to me. I don't understand. Carolina told us about your misfortune, and we're very sorry to hear of it. Why should you be sorry? Mr. Marshall, it may be difficult for you to understand, but these people would like to be your friends. They'd like to help you. Why should they want to be friends with me? Because we're neighbors. What a better reason. Look, Mumberti, I don't want any sermon and brotherly love. I'll admit I've been pig-headed about a lot of things. I realize that the night you're all here, and even my own daughter turned against me. Maybe I knew it even before then. But I'm willing to accept my punishment without a lot of preaching. We did not come here to preach, my friend. Get on with it, Pop. Tell them why we are here. It is very well. Uh, Mr. Marshall... Yes, we, yes. We, we, we would like to, to, to make an offer... While your cows uh, are being treated, uh, and until they're well again, we would like to share our milk with you so you may meet your quotas. Share, share your milk? But what about your own markets? Oh, see, well, there's so few, it, it will make a little difference. Well, why should you want to do this for after all the way I treated you? Oh, Dad, what difference does it make? Don't fight it. Accept their offer in the spirit it's given. Mm, if you think by well, this you're going to win me over, Roberta, it's not that easy. I can't change overnight, and, well, I just can't be bored. Uh, pardon me, but I don't think Mr. Umberti expects that. It's enough that you want to change. The rest will come about in time. Don't you see, Dad? It's the best way for all of us. As soon as our stream is cleared, you can run that channel onto Umberti's property. That's one way you can pay them back if you like. And meanwhile, he helps us to supply our markets and perhaps helps to build a few more of his own. Oh, I, I was not thinking of that. No, I believe you weren't. I, I don't know what to say. It's not what I expected. I, I just don't know. Oh, please, Dad, don't fight it. Oh, all right, Roberti. I'll accept your offer, but 
But on one condition. And what is that, Mr. Marshall? That you go away now and, uh, uh, well, just let me think. Got some things to get off the chest. But they... Well, they hadn't said in private. I understand. <laughs> Pietro, come on. Oh, you go ahead, Pop. Carolyn and I have some things to say, too. Yes, we've waited a long time. <laughs> well, Mr. Kopeck, I guess that leaves you and me. <laughs> I'm ready, Mr. Romberti. I must pack for my trip. Mr. Kobeck, hmm? I feel as if I owe you an apology. You came here for a vacation, and I lead you into all of this. But is that such a shame? If it had not been for you, my dear, I never would have met all you fine people, and, and believe me, my life would have been much emptier because of that. That's sweet of you. Thank you. May I kiss you goodbye? Well, really, now, I... Thank you. And so, Carl, my letter is nearly finished. The following day, I returned to Lake Success. I had found the rest I sought and much more. For the first time, I realized the approach to my task had been lacking in one of its most vital elements, that the answer to the problems that beset the world does not lie in man alone. We need help from a power greater than ourselves. For are we not seeking the same things after all, no matter what our blood or our heritage? Why, of course. So with patience and faith, I know now that no man need be a stranger, but a brother to all men. Did you ever notice what happens when you go to see a movie or read a story? Halfway through the thing, you know what's going to cause all the trouble. You got the villain nailed and you know what to do with him. Well, somehow it's different in real life. It's often little things that start a family breakup. Little things you don't see that seem insignificant until one day everything goes boom. We all get a lot of pleasure out of making others happy. And the greatest pleasure in life is to know that there is harmony and understanding in our homes. It takes effort and self-sacrifice to have things that way. It takes patience and prayer when things are going wrong. That's why we believe that praying together as a family is the surest way to family unity in a happy home, because a family that prays together stays together. Now, this is Bob Hope again, and before saying goodnight, I'd like to thank Otto Kruger for his performance as Jared and Otley Kruger for her portrayal of Carolyn. A special word of thanks also to Richard Burdick for writing tonight's play and to Max Terre for his music. This family theater production was directed by Dave Young. Others who appeared in our play tonight were Dick Ryan, Jay Novella, and William Martell. Next week, our family theater star will be Victor Mature in Stopwatch Finale. Your host will be Dick Haynes. Good night and God bless you. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need and by a friend of the New York Foundling Hospital, which cares for homeless and motherless babies without distinction of race, creed, or color. Join us next week at the same hour when Family Theater will present Victor Mature and Dick Hames. Tony Lafrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.